Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Cutter One. I am your host, Jay, just Jay, your resident troublemaker and your resident culture warrior. I hope you're all doing absolutely amazing on this Thursday afternoon as we head into another glorious weekend. All right, let's get right into it. Um, A little bit of good news, maybe, kind of, sort of. I mean, nothing great, but you know, good news about not a video where we're complaining okay so this is coming to us okay i scratch scratch what i just said this is coming to us from the the singular circlet of digit jewelry.net and the reason why I say that is because I used to have a lot of respect for this site back um, at the time of the Peter Jackson trilogy, the original Lord of the Rings trilogy. Um, I was a, I was on, I had signed up, was a member in the you know the forums and stuff of this particular site. Um, but since the Rings of Power and their absolute and utter selling out and shilling for for Amazon. Um, I've lost all respect for them. However, wanting to share a, a relevant news story with you guys sort of trumps my own personal feelings. So this is coming from the mm, not net. Um, and it says Stephen Gallagher to compose music for the war of the Rohirrim anime. It says, Movie Score, a site dedicated to tracking film music, reports that New Zealand composer and award-winning music editor Stephen, or Stephen Gallagher has been tapped to score the music for Kenji Kamiyama's The Lord of the Rings, The War of the Rohirrim. And then you see the, the tweet right there. And it says, Gallagher, probably best known to Tolkien fans for his work on The Hobbit, where, as well as working as music editor on all three films, he composed the songs, quote, Blunt the Knives and The Torture Song for an Unexpected Journey. Perusing IMDb reveals that Gallagher has previously composed music for a range of documentaries and short films, but arguably this is his most prominent compositional role to date. He also has a decades-long career as music editor spanning big productions like Avatar The Way of Water, District 9, and Wolf Warrior 2 to niche films such as Amy Berg's West of Memphis and Peter Jackson's The Lovely Bones. Last year, he won an Emmy Award for his sound work on Peter Jackson's The Beatles' Get Back. IMDb states that he's currently based at Park Road Post-Production in Wellington, a facility that's owned by Peter Jackson's Wingnut Films. The War of the Rohirrim is slated to release on April 12, 2024. Director Kenji Kamiyama is also currently co-directing on the final season of Ultraman with Shinji Aramaki, which will debut on Netflix sometime in 2023. And forgive me if I butchered anybody's names. Speculation. A speculatory postscript. I was idly chatting with staffer Justin about the leak confirm and he wondered if the selection of Gallagher could indicate a return to the style of music that was the hallmark of the Rankin-Bass animated features. After all, Blunt the Knives in an Unexpected Journey is very much a homage to the sing-along style of the animated Hobbit of 1977. Personally, I'm inclined to say no. I feel that both Blunt the Knives and the Torture Song, as sung by Barry Humphreys, Oh, more to a combination of the children's tale nature of Tolkien's novel and the comedic sensibilities of Peter Jackson. Meet the feebles, anyone? On the other hand, the tale of Helm Hammerhand is far grimmer. It's also a little tempting to add that Kamiyama animes typically play the material straight, but then the quirky Tashikomas, um, AI spider tank mechs, of the ghost in the shell 
standalone complex animated series are a spectacular outlier. Kamiyama leverages them in multiple ways, surreal comics, action heroes, philosophers, and ultimately as beings capable of self-sacrifice. The cute Tashikoma moments don't devalue the serious ones. In fact, they make them more rounded characters, I dare say more human, a crucial point to the story Ghost in the Shell explores. So, if Kamiyama could see a way that a quirky, lyrically focused tune would serve the needs of the Helm story, he absolutely has the chops to pull it off. Nevertheless, I think it's probably better to calibrate musical expectations more in line with the thoroughly grounded nature of Kamiyama's acclaimed adaptation of the fantasy story Sirai no Moribitu. Um, if nothing else, it's still difficult to get folks to take anime as a serious art form that's not just for kids without hobbling your production with a bunch of cutesy tunes. I'm sure Warner Brothers will be keenly aware of that. All that being said, we know that Miranda Otto has a very fine singing voice. If, as Aowen, she's relating this tale to someone like her grandchild Barahir, there's certainly an opportunity for her to sing in the intro or some lament as the outro at the end. Um, I like that idea. Um, all right, let's. I mean, let's 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 get into it. Personally, I mean, I I wasn't I wasn't impressed with the music from the Hobbit trilogy. Okay, and I'm not. That doesn't mean it was bad. That doesn't mean mean it was bad. It just means that it had an impossibly high standard to try and live up to. Okay, the point of reference for that was going to be Howard Shore's um, soundtrack for the 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 Lord of the Rings trilogy, right? Um, so I don't think um, that this Gallagher person even with just the two songs that he he wrote for that film um i don't think he's going to be able to rise to that level right now i could be wrong i could be pleasantly surprised and i want to be pleasantly surprised let me let me state that up front i want war of the rohirrim to to hit the bullseye in every conceivable way right storytelling lore um voice acting, soundtrack, right? Animation itself, right? I want it to hit the bullseye in every conceivable way because it will then send the message that you can do Tolkien right, okay? If you want to, okay? If you have the people that are willing to do what it takes to do the story right, not billion dollar corporations that are just looking to cash in, right? So I want it to be a 10 out of 10 in every conceivable aspect of it. Having said that, the two songs that that he's getting credit for 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 The Hobbit, I was less than impressed with. I'm not going to lie. Okay? Um on this channel, I don't lie. I don't shill for anybody. I I call it as I see it, you know. There, there's what I want and there's what we get, right? And sometimes they're not the same thing. Okay? Peter Jackson gave me what I wanted in the original Lord of the Rings trilogy, but Peter Jackson did not give me everything I wanted in the Hobbit trilogy. One of those things being certain aspects of the soundtrack. And and I should say that's more of a Stephen Gallagher thing than it is a, a Peter Jackson thing. So, I, I mean, I'm again, I'm cautiously optimistic on Mr. Gallagher. I'm sure he, he's very talented. Um, and I'm sure that, you know, he, he knows what he's doing, you know, we'll just have to see if he can pull it off. Um, but you know, it, it's not like him having a connection to the Hobbit fills me with any sort of sense of relief that like, oh, okay, phew, they got somebody who's, you know, done this before and, you know, knows the world and knows how to write, you know, compositions and musical pieces for this world. Um, you know, his, his two outings in the Hobbit were less than impressive to me 
as a Tolkien fan. All right. But again, that doesn't mean much that this is just me saying that I'm glad that they got somebody who at least has some familiarity with working on their craft in a Lord of the Rings, Tolkien inspired capacity. Um, I just, I, I don't know in terms of if he's doing like the whole soundtrack, how that's going to play out. If he's going to bring this quote unquote quirkiness that the article talks about to it, or if, if he's going to go more of the, um, the, the, um, Lord of the Rings soundtrack where they were basically just trying to sort of paint pictures of aspects of the story using music, right? So the very distinctive themes that you get for the Hobbits, very distinctive themes that you get for Rohan, very distinctive themes that you get for, you know, the elves and Galadriel, right? Very mu musically, they're very, very distinct. And there's, there's a lot to it that was done intentionally to sort of weave this picture with the music. And I don't know Stephen Gallagher or Stephen Gallagher, um, if if he has the chops to do that well in a a um, Tolkien setting, um, I, and I guess we're gonna have to wait and see. Again, I'm not saying that this is good news or bad news. I'm just saying it is news, and you know we'll have to wait and see how it plays out. I'm still holding, you know, ca I'm still cautiously optimistic that uh, the War of the Rohirrim is going to be everything that we were hoping to get in terms of sticking to Tolkien's lore um, that we were hoping to get in Rings of Power, but obviously didn't. Um, I'm, I, again, I want War of the Rohirrim to succeed. I want it to hit the mark on every conceivable aspect that they can. Um, I don't know if that's going to be the case, though, but we'll have to wait and see. Let me know what you think down in the comments section below. Do you think Mr. Stephen Gallagher or Stephen Gallagher, um, you know, composing the music for War of the Rohirrim, um, does that make you feel better about it? Does it make you feel worse about it? Knowing the songs that he did in The Hobbit? Um, or do you not care either way? Um, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. It'll be interesting to see what you guys think. All right, folks, that's going to do it for this one. Remember, if you like the video, like the video. If you feel like sharing the video, by all means, get it out there. It helps with the algorithm. It helps get a scene. helps more people partake and, and get involved in defending the professor and his works. And if you have not subscribed, I would hope that you would consider subscribing to the channel and joining the army of beautiful badasses as we draw our line in the sand and protect the professor. And if you are a returning subscriber, as always, from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much. You guys make this fun. You guys make it worthwhile. I will be interested in seeing what you guys have to say down in the comments section below. I always read them. Um, I, 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 at the very least, unless you like really say something that I utterly think is complete wrong and yeah or 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 just like a nasty or stupid comment right um i i will i will i tend to throw a like on people's comments just because that's just my way of saying hey you're participating and i'm acknowledging that right so a lot of times if you guys you know you'll see a thumbs up will come from somebody right um that's I, I, I can guarantee if I try to get to everybody, right? Unless there's been like a shit ton of comments that come in real quick, I will always try to get to everybody um, and at least let you know that, hey, yeah, I took the time out to read what you said. You took the time out to write it. I will take the time out to read it. Um, and, you know, sometimes I just give you guys the thumbs up. Even if I don't wholeheartedly or 100% agree, I at least give you the thumbs up saying, hey, listen, I saw what you wrote, you know, you made some valid points. I may not necessarily agree, but I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to participate. And so, so yeah, so I will be interested to see what you guys have to say down in the comment section below. And uh, I think that's going to do it for this one. So yeah, if you like the video, like the video. If you want to share the video, share the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have, I will see you on the next one. Remember to be good, be awesome, um, stay safe. And above all else, remember to stay more dorkish. Peace.